Hey guys, I was gonna share with you a vlog about my work, but I decided to make it a little more personal because I just wanted to share this story with you. Exactly one year ago today was the worst day of my life. I lost my dad due to a massive stroke when he had a ginormous blood clot that caused a brain hemorrhage and he left. This is really hard. I haven't really had a chance to talk this out throughout the year since I kind of just buried myself into work, but I thought it was really important just to acknowledge it and talk about it and try to heal. So what happened was 6.30 that morning, my mom called me in a panic. I was still asleep and I was just like, hello, and she said, Hurry, quick, come over, your dad. And I'm like, what's wrong? He had a stroke or so, or a heart attack. I don't recall exactly what happened, but my dad actually went to the emergency room a lot growing up. So I was really worried. I didn't know what was going on, but I raced over there as fast as I could, praying that this was just like one of those old episodes where he turned out to be fine. Two years prior, he had also gone to the ER because he had some irregular heartbeat that was really bothering him. It turns out that he had AFib, which is a condition that your heart beats irregularly. So they put him on this blood thinner called comedone, comedin, um, that would thin his blood and help with the um, irregular heartbeat. So one of the known side effect of that was stroke and the doctor talked to us about the risk of being on that but they said that it's going to be okay as long as we watch the dosage and he gets checked regularly. Well, he was traveling for a few weeks with my aunts and uncle that were visiting from Vietnam and I guess he didn't have a chance to go get checked and I don't know why, I don't know what happened but the cause of his death was the stroke. So why am I talking about this today? I've done extensive research both growing up and um, throughout the past year on how I could better take care of myself because heart disease is genetics partially and it could happen to me. I could have major heart attack if I don't take care of myself correctly. So if you guys have noticed, during the past year, I've kind of made a shift of what kind of recipes um, I put on the channel. They lean towards the healthier side. But for me, I love cooking and baking because it's kind of a form of my expression and I love making it for other people. So I'd love to start baking again. And I've been able to do that through making these ridiculously unhealthy stuff on Sweeten, which I try not to eat, but it's just a form of art for me to create these fun things. So that's been kind of my outlet. I wanted to share with you guys what I've learned about taking care of your heart and making better food choices and lifestyle choices for you. So the foods that I usually make for my husband and I during the week include lean protein and fish. We rarely eat red meat because red meat can be really bad for you. Um, it has a lot of saturated fats. So I tend to cook stuff like grilled chicken, grilled salmon, um, even more healthy stuff like vegetarian tofu Thai curry, which I filmed on my Snapchat the other day just to show you guys how to make it. The five foods that I recommend for a healthy heart are lean proteins like chicken or salmon. I usually eat a lot of chicken breast during the week. I'll cook up a batch and you guys have seen me on Snapchat where I make everything in my pressure cooker including chicken pho or like chicken tinga which I make all the time and even salmon. Salmon has full of omega fatty acids which actually helps with irregular heartbeat and removing plaque in your arteries. 
The second one is oatmeal. You guys already know that I love oatmeal and anytime I have um, an extra five, 10 minutes in the morning, I'll make that for breakfast before I go to work. Oatmeal is high in soluble fiber and can lower your cholesterol, which is really important. You always wanna keep your cholesterol at a really good level. The third is pulses like lentils, chickpeas, black beans. Again, I use my pressure cooker to cook up a huge vat of beans every weekend because we don't eat carbs during the week so I don't eat rice, pasta, any of that anymore during the week. We substitute it with usually black beans or lentil. I recently made this um, turkey stuffed cabbage and I put lentils in there and it was so good. It was so satisfying and it really keeps me full too. But if you guys don't have a pressure cooker, I really recommend buying the canned ones that do not have added sodium. Sodium could raise your blood pressure which creates um, heart problems as well. So if you do buy canned ones and it has added salt, just make sure you rinse it out with water really well. The fourth one is dark chocolate, which number one, satisfies my sweet tooth, but number two, it also has a lot of antioxidants and flavonoids, which prevents the bad cholesterol from sticking to your arteries, and it also helps to prevent any blood clots. And the last one is dark veggies like kale, spinach, um, it's good for you. It has a lot of fiber and a lot of vitamins, and the best thing about this is that it's kind of a mind trick, right? If I eat a lot of greens, I know that I'm healthier because I'm not eating a lot of the bad stuff. So I try to make better choices for a healthier lifestyle. After what happened to my dad, I also signed up for the gym. Um, I'm still working on going more regularly, at least three times a week, but it's a challenge with such a busy schedule. So Every morning, I take Ollie out on a walk, so that gets my steps in. But what's really helpful is that I also track my steps, my calories, my food intake on this cool app called My Fitness Pal. You guys should follow me because it'll help keep me accountable by logging my stuff in and seeing what we eat. So classes that I like taking at the gym are cycling, um, it really gets me pumped with the loud music and how fast paced the classes and I usually try to push myself in these classes because I don't want to fall behind and look slow so doing classes helps to motivate me. I also love going to Zumba just to get my groove on a little bit and it's always so fun um, just to shake your booty a little bit. Body Pump is also a new one that I found where um, I have to use light weights and do a lot more body, core, workouts like that. Um, I get really sore afterwards, but it feels so good. So those are the types of classes that I like to go to at the gym just to maintain a healthy lifestyle. On top of everything, I really recommend drinking more water. Water clears out toxins in your body, and the more you drink, the better you'll feel. But be careful not to overdrink because too much of anything is never a good thing. Some of the foods that I've definitely tried to cut back on are saturated fats. For example, red meat has a lot of saturated fats, bacon, cheese. So just always look at the label to make sure that there's a well-balanced uh, meal. Of course, I'm not saying cut it out completely because I love to indulge. So I try to eat really healthy during the week so that I can have one cheat day where I can just kind of go crazy and eat whatever I want so I don't feel deprived. Another thing to look for on the labels is partially hydrogenated oils, which is another term for like trans fat. Stay away from those because those are major artery blockers and they don't process. Well, just stay away from processed foods, period, if you can. Another thing that I suggest looking out for is your sodium level. Try to keep it under one teaspoon of sodium a day because eating a lot of salt can higher your blood pressure and that's really dangerous for your arteries and heart. A really good substitute for salt that I started using is lemon juice. It brings out all the flavor and I don't feel deprived of the saltiness. Also, if you guys noticed in all my recipes, I only use kosher salt instead of regular table salt because I feel like like the granules are a little bit larger and it's not as salty as table salt. So a little bit just goes a long way. And if you slowly reduce your salt intake, your taste buds will adjust and get used to it. 
A lot of you guys have asked me, where did you learn how to cook? Well, I started cooking at a really young age, mostly because of my dad's health. Um, he was actually banned from cooking at home because he would add in a lot of MSG, which is really bad for you. I started getting all these healthy cookbooks from the library, learning how to make um, low sodium, low fat meals um, for the family. So that was how I started experimenting with things. But once I moved out, of my parents' house, my mom took over and she started making healthy foods for him. She would juice for him every day and just try to make food that that was good for him. In the past year, even though I try to make those healthier lifestyles, I avoided going to the doctor because I was kind of in denial. I didn't want to know if something was wrong to me just because I was completely traumatized by going back to the hospital. A few weeks ago, I actually woke up in the middle of the night in a panic because I felt my heart palpitating and I thought I was literally having a heart attack. I didn't, don't worry. Um, I went on WebMD and I started reading about heart attacks and I think mentally it made me even more scared. So I immediately called the doctors and asked for an appointment right away. I went in, got my blood test. Um, they tested my cholesterol, my sugar levels, um, all that stuff. And I turned out to be fine. I also got my blood pressure tested. And you know, at a lot of drugstores, they have those blood pressure monitors where you just put your arm through and they have like a band thing. I really recommend taking advantage of that. I've been going there to track my uh, blood pressure, which is totally fine right now. I say right now because you never know and I really want to keep it healthy. I recommend going there and taking advantage of it and just knowing where you are with your health. I know I wasn't very good at it in the past year, but I'm definitely going to make it a point to get checked yearly and at least once a quarter go in to test my blood pressure to make sure everything's okay. I think the statistics is that one in four or five women die from heart disease in America. That's crazy. That's crazy, crazy. I always was scared about cancer, but heart disease is really, really important to look out for as well because it's still the leading cause of death in America. These are things that I really wanted to share with you guys to have a better lifestyle. If you guys have any tips for me, I would love to hear it. I mean, I've lived with this um, through my dad my whole life, so I know I know how hard it could be and how challenging it can be to change your lifestyle. So why am I talking about all these heart health things? Well, I lost my dad to this, and he was only 67 years old. Health is like the most important thing that you have and for your loved ones or for yourself you want to live long to enjoy all those days with them so I want to make sure that for me I be as healthy as I can for my husband for my dog for my mom too it's just important so I want you guys to be healthy so in ending, I know this was a lot for a vlog. Thank you so much for letting me talk it out. My friend Aislinn recently came over and her dad passed away during the holidays too. And we were just talking about how we haven't really dealt with it and it's really hard. It's, it's a lot to kind of keep inside. So thank you so much for listening to me. I just wanted to share with you guys this totally heartfelt speech that he gave at my wedding. My friend Ellie, my friend Ellie actually did the calligraphy for this. Um, he had pinned his speech on his refrigerator when I found it when we were cleaning up my mom's house. And so I wanted to commemorate it. Eventually I do want to frame it and put it up once I'm ready to kind of look at it. Right now it's just in my wedding scrapbook, but, um, I'll read it to you guys. Today, my lovely daughter Zung is gonna have a new life, the married life. I'm sure she will be a good wife and mother like Tram, her sister. My family and I wish Zung and Nathan a lifetime of happiness in their new life together. Nate, you have made the right and good choice to marry this beautiful young lady. Do you know why? I will tell you. 
When you are stressed, she will be a musician and play the piano for you to relax. Never happened. <laughs> When you are hungry, she will be a good chef and make good food for you to enjoy every day. One very One more very important thing is she will be your bodyguard when you need it because she, ha she has won a gold medal and a black belt in Taekwondo. This is the story. When she was 12 years old, her Taekwondo school had a competition with other Taekwondo schools in town. Zhang had to fight with kids. Zhang had to fight with. <clears throat> Zhang had to fight with kids in her group. Zhang had a fight with kids in her group for the black belt gold medal. At that time, she was very tall and very skinny. Before the competition, the organizing committee had to measure her height and weight. When they measured her, the other kids were too heavy or too big or too short and small. There was no match. Finally, the organizing committee announced that Zhang had no competitors and gave her a gold medal. The head of her Taekwondo school had a raffle prize for whoever won the gold medal, and they would get a round trip ticket to Hawaii. Zhang also won that raffle. Nate, I would like to give you an advice that you shouldn't make her mad because she hasn't practiced her Taekwondo in a very long time. Just kidding. You are both very lucky to find each other. Let's raise a toast, and her mom and I wish you both a long and happy life together. So that was a speech from my dad at my wedding. He's a man of very few words, and my husband was actually scared of him. Um, but he's just a big teddy bear and so silly. I was so close to him, and so thankful that the day before he passed, I was able to go on a long walk with him. He met Ollie for the first time, and. There were just no signs, and I had no idea. I just wished that I was able to say goodbye to him um, before he passed. But I'm glad that I had the opportunity to walk with him and spend a little time with him before he left. Anyways, thank you so much, you guys, for watching this and for listening to me. I really appreciate it. This was kind of heavy for a vlog, but. I will move on and um, next week do something lighter. Thanks, guys. Bye.